So what I'm going to tell you is going to be pretty interesting to most of you. Um, it's been a crazy year of uh, sudden death and sadness and poor health and also good health and recovery and so much going on in the world and we've been lied to for most of our lives if not all of our lives we grew up in in uh, the education system learning about the four food groups and uh, you know and, and from that point on to so many others it's all bullshit and so why do I say that there's a parasite that's invaded the West and we're all victim to it and the government knows about it and it, as a matter of fact they feed it it's not your typical parasite when you think about worms or or, or bugs things like of that nature but it's a parasite nonetheless and when you give a rat a parasite it changes the way that it lives its life rats are nocturnal they come out at night they're afraid of us but when a rat has a parasite it comes out in the day it comes right up to you and takes your food from you they're braver than they should be and well maybe that's what's happening to us or that is what's happening to us we have no fear when it comes to food we need to eat we just chase that food and what food do we chase things like chocolate bars and chips and bread and alcohol and all these things that are not good for us and why aren't they good for us because they contain sugar someone uh, someone said one time what's better for you to eat a chocolate bar or two pieces of whole wheat bread and the answer to that as I understand it is a chocolate bar and that's because the whole wheat bread turns into so much glucose in your stomach that it's more than a chocolate bar contains and so to get quickly to what is this parasite well this parasite is yeast and so we all have yeast in our in our intestines that is thriving in this environment we just keep feeding it and feeding it and feeding it and it keeps asking for more and more and more and we do and what does that do well it makes our waistline grow and that is not good for us it's not good for our heart it's not good for our genes it's not good for really anything or anyone it's not good for your self-esteem and so how do you combat that you need to stop that's enough you need to stop and what do I mean by stop well we've also been told we have to eat three square meals a day and then some people have changed that to oh the California diet you eat six meals the size of your fist a day and there's so many fad diets out there that are all bullshit because we are, you know, we, we started out as these hunter gatherers and, you know, we didn't always have food and we were accustomed to going without and we can go without. And trust me, I know I've only eaten, well, I haven't eaten for over a dozen days this month. And that's because I do these fasts for 72 hours at a time and I feel great. I had a health scare last year, last September, and I had food poisoning, and I didn't know what it was. And when I went to the ER, neither did they. They thought maybe my appendix was gonna blow, they thought maybe I had diverticulitis, and then when they kicked me out of the hospital, they had no idea, and they told me, you're gonna have a hard time figuring this one out with your doctors. So that was not you know, off to a good start. Well, fortunately, I have some good doctors, and because of them, We've come up with some ideas as to what it is. I'm still trying to solidify what the problem resulting from the food poisoning is. But regardless of that, I'm in better health than I have been in years. Um, you know, I gained a lot of weight when I was in a car accident and I've been you know, shedding those pounds all year since this issue. Uh, the new year last year, I was 265 and today I'm under 200 pounds. And uh, a lot of that is from exercising with my friends, going out bike riding on the weekends, and uh, then 
aside from that, it's this, it's this intermittent fasting that we're doing and uh, which, which has elevated itself into long-term fasting. I've heard stories of there's one guy, he fasted for 388 days under the instruction of a doctor. The doctor was involved in that. But we don't really have to eat, not like we think we do. And to give your body that break gives your body a chance to do something else. I mean, we'd all love to learn how to play the piano, right? But we don't have the time to learn how to play the piano. Well, our body would love to repair itself, but it doesn't have the time to repair itself. All it's doing is digesting food. And then when it's partway digested food, we throw some more in there. And then we digest a little bit more and we throw some more on top of it. And our bodies just can't keep up. And so we, our body just keeps packing it away and it makes our waistlines grow. And uh, you know, it, it's, it's, we can't continue this. And so here I am to tell you um, some of the truths that I've learned this year. And uh, I think the most important one is, is fasting is good for you. There's cultures that they fast on a regular basis and um, that's old knowledge continued on into, into present time. And not everybody knows why they do it. I think probably most people don't know why they do it. And so here I am to tell you the reason why we do it. So, and that is the reason that we give our body a break so that it has time to do other things that it really needs to do. And, uh, you know, I heard today, this morning, that my good friend lost his wife the other day. And uh, that was really hard to hear. And I've been packing around this idea of making a video and, and telling everybody about my journey so that I can help you with this knowledge rather than one-on-one -on -one and waiting till I see you and you're like, oh, Pete, what happened to you? You're disappearing. You know, I thought I'd just tell everybody. So here I am telling the world, um, I am not a doctor. I'm a realtor. And, uh, but that being said, I'm no slouch uh, when it comes to uh, thought patterns and thinking and I've, I've figured some stuff out. So how do I go about not eating for three days in a row? Uh, the first day, uh, you know, I, I, when dinner comes along one night, I eat a nice dinner and uh, we only eat, we try to only eat whole foods. So we make our food, you know, we have real meat, um, we have real fruit, real vegetables. We, you know, we make our own sourdough bread. We, um, you know, we don't drink milk. We don't have sugar in the house, except for uh, there is sugar for when um, someone's by and they want coffee. And we don't always have cream in the house because we don't even drink coffee. And, um, you know, so these are some of the things that are, that are bad for you. Um, you know, uh, I recently was listening to a doctor speak. He's the guy that, uh, I, I can't recall his name, but uh, he's the guy that taught the NFL about concussions. And he had a job to do as a, as a brain scan specialist, whatever that title might really be. Um, he, would, he would look at the brains of murderers and understand what, um, what a damaged brain looks like. And I mean, he's got a lot of, a lot of fun antidotes in his, in his uh, or anecdotes in his, in his uh, tells on, on, on the program that I was watching on, on probably YouTube. And it was, he was talking about, you know, how when he met his wife after three weeks, he had her into his office and, hey, why don't, uh, why don't you lay in there and we'll just scan your brain. And really he was looking at her brain to see what kind of damage she had make sure she's not a murderer, I guess. And uh, if anybody dates one of his daughters for longer than four months, he's scanning them. And so he's got some truths that he realizes and he can see. And some of those truths were that, you know, when we drink, we're damaging our brain and he can see it. And when we drink coffee, we damage our brain and we can see it. And the first time I met alcohol. Um, and, uh, you know, when we do all these things that we know are bad for us, um, but we think, yeah, it's okay in moderation and, and there might be some truth to that. But, you know, when we do things excessively, we're definitely hurting ourselves. 
And so that's, you know, that comes back to all of this and our general health and, and then my truths about, about fasting. Um, you know, I take that dinner that night and I eat my dinner and I go to bed and I wake up and I know I'm not eating that day. And so I just enjoy my day. And it's a hard one. The first day is harder because you have all that, all that glucose in your body and your system and your body's using it all day. And it's telling you this yeast is crying for more. And, um, you know, there's lots of ways to tell that you have a yeast overgrowth and they say you can take your morning spit and put it in a glass of water. And if it's stringy going down, well, you have yeast or if you have itchy legs and you have yeast overgrowth, or if you have black spots on your calves and you have yeast overgrowth and can't remember all the different things, but that's what Google is for. And there's, uh, and your doctor and there's so many, there's so many tells about yeast and, um, but it's kind of a known that it's a problem. And so you go through that first day and you're hungry and you, and you want to eat because your, your yeast is, is begging for more and don't feed it and know that it's going to get better. And so, you know, if you can't handle it, go to bed early and wake up the next day and the next day is different because your body has used up that stored glucose and it'll be a very, a very easy day compared to the first day. Um, another thing that I do while I'm fasting is, is I get this, you know, the latest rage, Celtic salt. Um, it's also known as gray salt. I get it for $6 for 400 grams from a local health food store. Um, I see it on Amazon for $42 for 500 grams or milligrams, whatever it is, I think it's milligrams. And uh, I mean, that's ridiculous. People are gouging us. It's the way of the world. But you know, keep your eye out for it. It's, it doesn't have to be expensive. It's no different than the other stuff. The stuff I pay, you know, five dollars for. Uh, it's from the beaches of France as well, and um, it's unfortunate that it has to travel in a plane to get here. But you know, that's a whole other topic when we start getting into climate change. So we'll just keep this one on food health, and uh, you know, so that second day, and the first day too. I take the, take the salt and I put it on my tongue and, and let it dissolve. And so I've heard the number one to five grams of salt a day of this Celtic salt. And um, it says in the Bible, you should eat salt with every meal. And what salt does is it turns on your digestive fluids in your stomach. And so it helps you to digest that meal. And without it, you might not have as much digestive uh, fluid, which would be uh, the acid in, in your stomach to uh, to dissolve the food so that you can digest it better. And so the other part is to masticate, to chew your food really well and create that, uh, you know, that paste before you don't don't swallow chunks. And that's a problem that, that many of us have is, you know, myself included, we don't chew our food enough where we got things to do, places to go, but it is important. But um, so the salt and water is, is is what really helps me through the fast. I take that salt, I dissolve it on my tongue, and I drink a big glass of water, and I do that throughout the day. If I ever feel hungry, I just drink the salt and water. And um, so day two, that's all you're really having is salt and water. Uh, if you take, if you take, you know, medication, you should probably take, continue to take your medication. Uh, talk to your doctor, tell them what you're doing. And um, but uh, as far as you know, the vitamins and stuff, you don't want to take something that's an antioxidant because that will stop the process that you're trying to turn on. And um, so day two is, is basically all salt and water. And, uh, and then you go to bed and, and it hasn't been a very hard day. And you wake up and uh, again, you know, you're not gonna eat, so you don't eat. You have, you open up, you know, well, get a glass of water and salt and, and enjoy that. Some people, you know, you can have bone broth. You can't have more than 50 calories is as I understand it. Bone broth is like 10 calories and it's good for your skin. Uh, I don't bother doing that. I'm afraid that it'll make me want to eat. Um, so I just do the salt and water. Um, but you know, by the end of the day, by dinner time, and I normally have a late dinner on my first day, which might be a mistake because 
my time to start eating is probably around eight o'clock. And so by the time eight o'clock is, I can eat. Now I haven't done it yet, but I know that I could actually continue on and not eat that day and just go on to the next day. But I haven't done that yet. And I heard that three days, anything after that might be excessive and you might actually start losing muscle mass. And we don't really want to do that. Um, but some of the things that happen, um, you know, and one of the ways that you can shorten this process, as I understand it, is you can do like a paleo diet, which is all meat and eggs for five days and then start your fast. And you'll find that you hit this. So what they call this, and, and we've all heard the words ketosis. It's, a, it's like a, a burst into, the, into ketosis. And so if you do that five day paleo diet, you really only have to fast for two days to get the effects of three days, as I've heard. But what are these effects of the third day? So as I understand it, what happens is you get a uh, process called um, autophagy. And autophagy is, as I understand it, your, your, your body takes all of your cells that are not the best performers and it wipes them out. It's like, okay, you're done. And it, and it packs them all away. As I've seen it, it corrals them and uh, keeps them all together. And it's doing, and I guess it's shutting them all down and it's gonna flush them out. How that happens, I don't know. Maybe it sends it to your liver and it finds its way out, whatever it is. But autophagy is, is, the, is the removal of um, not your best cells, your best blood cells. And, and I proved this to myself. Uh, my third day on my second or first fast, I did a live blood analysis. Uh, my wife uh, has that experience with live blood analysis. We have a dark field microscope. And so I went and I pricked my finger and put it on the slide. And, and I was looking at my blood under the microscope and I had all these great looking red blood cells. And, and normally I have rollos, which is stacked blood, which means I'm dehydrated. And but since I've been doing this water and Celtic salt for a couple months now, and what that does is the Celtic salt allows your body to absorb the water into your cells rather than just putting it under your skin. And it affects like inflammation, like, you know, when your rings don't fit properly and, and your socks, when you take them off, you have the swelling above your socks and no swelling under your socks. And, that's all water under the skin, as I understand it. But this, um, but this process of salt with your water helps your body to actually absorb the water into your cells. So when I was looking at that slide under the microscope, I saw all these healthy red blood cells floating around, looking beautiful. And uh, I was moving the slide around and I got over to the outside and I was like, Oh, look at all of these. And, and so a, a dying blood cell is round with like bumps all over it. Uh, it's like the opposite of a wiffle ball. Um, they're bumps rather than holes. And so that's a dying cell. And I saw they were all kind of grouped, not kind of, they were all grouped together in this big group. And it was like they were corralled. And it's like they weren't allowed to leave into the group of good. And then I was like, wow, that's amazing, and showed my wife and, and you know, kept looking at the slide and moving it around. And, and then I found another group of cells, and I've never seen this before. They were, they were like compressed, and it, it, was, it was very like, um, you know, 60s LSD kind of looking. It was, they were swirly and compressed into, it was like taking bubbles and just squishing them down. It was something I've never seen before on a, on a live blood analysis. And uh, it was very cool. And I figured that that must have been the after process of the corralling of the dying cells. This was the cells that it was about to wash out. It was, uh, it was really neat to see and definitely proof that there's something happening on that third day that I've never seen before in my blood. And I check my blood pretty regularly just for kicks because I can. Um, now, during the first three-day fast that I did, I lost nine pounds. Um, I've also um, been dealing with um, some uh, taking a desiccated thyroid hormone, and um, I've actually stopped taking that now. I did stop taking it once, and I and I gained 
10 pounds instantly that week. And then I started taking it again and I lost those 10 pounds. And so I'm no doctor, but I talk to my doctors when I do these things and um, my doctor says, you know, well, maybe you should keep taking it. And, um, but last week I did stop taking it. And uh, so the second time I did it, I didn't see any weight gain and not much weight loss, but no weight gain and no, and all that weight gain was water retention. Um, and I lost that 10 pounds in a week of just intermittent fasting and just, you know, living a good life. Um, after the third time um, that I did the three day fast, this time I, uh, I think I lost three or four pounds. And so I feel really good about what I'm doing. I'm not worried about the desiccated thyroid. I'm gonna do a test again in the near future and see where I'm at. But, so this autophagy, what it does is you're taking all of these blood cells that are poor performers and getting rid of them. I'm no doctor, as I've said before, but as I understand it, these, these dying blood cells are not a good thing you know, to have. You want healthy blood cells, and so if you can clear them out, you're clearing out some, some bad stuff. And um, I mean, that's what it's all about, doing these, these, um, these things in, in life that have real results and not just uh, spinning our wheels and, and you know, doing bad diets and you know, losing a few pounds and then gaining them right back. And um, so I found something that works for me. Um, my guess is that it'll work for you. It's not hard to do. Uh, the difficulty is, I believe, the yeast makes it really tough on that first day. But we need to get past that yeast for so many reasons. And we need to, uh, you know, I love the farmers. The farmers, you know, they produce all this stuff that, uh, that we need. But, you know, there's some things we don't really need, and, or at least as much of. And you know everything in moderation, maybe, maybe. Um, but we definitely know that um, yeast is a bad thing to have an overgrowth of, and uh, I feel really good today. I'm still losing weight. I still have more weight that I that I'll be comfortable to lose, and um, you know I'm going for ultimate health here. This. Um, you know, this time that we're living in, that's, I think, what, what, uh, what matters the most. And so what do you get out of, out of good health? Well, you get, uh, you know, happiness and long life and self-esteem and, you know, keep moving forward. And uh, if you've made it to this point, then, you know, I wish you all the best and good luck on your journey and feel free to, to share your results and uh, if you have comments, please comment below. Let me know about, you know, anything that you want to let me know about. And um, look forward to reading any of that. And remember, don't forget to like this video and share it with everybody that you know. This is good information. This is real information. This is not disinformation. This is the real goods from a real person. Thank you.